Please welcome to the stage your host, founding president, Bitcoin Association, Jimmy Huynh. Good morning, New York City. It's so exciting to be back here in the world's capital and so great to see this exciting city alive again. We are here in the concrete jungle where dreams are made of, where bright lights inspire you. And it's so fitting that we're just above Times Square because as Calvin Ayer just said, the theme of this conference is it's about time. And we are here to educate New York City, Times Square, and the world watching virtually about the BSV blockchain and how elements of time are critical to powering its design and how the journey of Bitcoin has really been about making better use of the time of its invention. I've been thinking about time a lot for the past few days, because just a few days ago, before I boarded a plane here to New York City, last Friday, I was at a family wedding in Southern California. And my parents attended that wedding, and they are definitely not people who are dancers. But I, looking at them, seeing that they have been a married couple for a very long time, from decades ago in Vietnam, pushed them onto the dance floor when there was an anniversary dance during the reception getting all the married couples onto the floor, and then gradually eliminating them based upon the length of their marriage. So my parents, who are definitely not dancers, lo and behold, became the last couple standing. 59 years of marriage from Vietnam to the United States. And the entire wedding reception celebrated their time together. And it made me really think about the power of time and how it marks progression in life and change. So it's the progression of a child born to that same couple in Vietnam who's taken the time to grow and to have the honor today to speak before you on the stage and educate you about blockchain. And with enough good fortune and time, hopefully we'll grow to look just like my father does at 87 years old today. Time gives meaning to life. It also gives meaning to Bitcoin and it really reinforces why we believe in the Satoshi vision, because of the time it has taken for all of us to get here. Over the next few days, we're going to learn about this power of time to affect Bitcoin's design and blockchain and what we're all going to build in terms of utility with it. I want to take this time to give you my own brief history of time, also talk about how time really relates to Bitcoin and blockchain, and finally, why this is now the time for BSV's emergence. Time is something immemorial. Humans have tried to measure it, calculate it, use it to influence our lives and structure things such as agriculture, dating back to ancient times with st structures such as Stonehenge, which were built to orient to seasonal events such as the summer solstice and help mark memories for humans. And then in ancient Egypt, the first attempts to actually create a device that measured time resulted in the sundial, where the marks on the dial were split into 12 equal parts, trying to measure in 12 equal parts the time between sunrise to sunset, which is the precursor to today's time system, which is so much built around the number 12. An ingenious invention, except for the fact that not every day had the same amount of length as we know. And then humans realized, oh, I can't use this in the dark. How do I tell time at night? And so humans started developing devices that would use the flow of water, such as water clocks, the flow of sand, such as an hourglass, and even the flow of melting wax in order to tell time. Because time is reinforced as something that flows continuously. And then we got mechanical with the emergence of watch towers and clock towers in Western Europe in the 14th and 15th centuries. And then pendulums became apparent using harmonic motion to tell time, or things such as metronomes. And time became so powerfully small in devices that we could wear it on our wrists. And eventually, in the uh, 20th century, humans invented the atomic clock, using the electromagnetic radiation of certain atom states to be able to tell time with such accuracy down to seconds for spans of thousands of years. 
Then we looked back to the stars, as we did many centuries ago, with the emergence of the global positioning system and the network time protocol that actually synchronizes time across the world and allows us to interact with people no matter what time zone they are in. Time is now digital, and it's all over the world in showing us, as I've seen with my life, the progression. So the meaning of time is important. It's not just that we can actually track time. It has meaning to our lives as humans, measuring the progression of our age, providing us moments that we remember from birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate. And it also organizes our lives, since we're all now stuck on these digital calendars that we live by. And it's also a means by which we measure speed and performance. And importantly, for what we'll discuss over the next few days, it provides order to events, a way to record the truth of history when payments are made, when certain events happen in your life and information. And because of that, when we record information and the time at which it happens, we can later detect whether there's been changes, fraud, dishonesty. And also, as I mentioned, time is now synchronized across the world to provide us the means to connect across a uniform system. What does this all have to do with Bitcoin, blockchain, and time? Well, so much of Bitcoin's design is really based in time. In fact, digital time stamping is a lot of where it started. These are three works, including two gentlemen who you'll hear from later today, Stuart Haber and Scott Stornetta, who are recognized as the fathers of the concept of blockchain. And that recognition stems from the seminal works that you see on this screen, in which they wrote in the 1990s about digital timestamping. The idea that you could record a timestamp of a document, a record, an event, and then start sharing the record of that to be maintained in a distributed means, not just held by one person. These three works are cited in references in the famed Satoshi Nakamoto Bitcoin white paper. They provide much of the foundation of the concept of blockchain as something that is used to digitally timestamp records of information, payments, as well as other data. And that gave birth to the Bitcoin white paper, which laid out for the world a vision for a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that would allow online payments to be set much more efficiently without going through a financial institution, without going through intermediaries. But the Bitcoin white paper doesn't use the term blockchain. It's what we all use today. But for those who've actually read the white paper, you'll know it uses the phrase distributed time stamp server, a recognition of the power of time stamping, just as Stuart Haber and Scott Sternetta recognize. And in the first release of the Bitcoin client software, the alpha release, if you actually go in and read the notes that are associated with it, Satoshi also did not use the word blockchain. He used in several places the word time chain, a chain of time, time events being linked together. And the white paper also talks about the need to solve the problem of double spending by using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed timestamp server to generate computational proof of the chronological order of transactions. That chronological order of transactions is also very key to Bitcoin's design because by recording events of history, whether it's a payment or a piece of data, in chronological order, you can detect whether there are changes and also give meaning to the information. And that is why the blockchain is really just a very sophisticated digital means of doing what we used to do manually, time stamping cards or pieces of paper. But it's done in a distributed way. Instead of one person keeping you, you have multiple copies of the ledger that are updated. And that is critical, as we'll hear over the next few days, to its ability to provide honesty. Honest, a word used 15 times in the Bitcoin white paper. Because the more we can all access the same source of information that is time-stamped in chronological order of events in history, the more we can all detect whether someone is trying to cheat. Other parts of Bitcoin's design are linked to time. There's the block time. It has a system where the average time at which new blocks are added to the chain with more information is targeted to 10 minutes. We all know it's not exactly 10 minutes. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. But the system is designed to synchronize to that target number, thus yielding a target number of 144 blocks per day based upon time. 
And there's the all-important time schedule for the distribution of fresh coins from Bitcoin's 21 million supply. Everyone focuses on that number. 21 million total Bitcoin will ever exist in the world. They're all created in the beginning, but they come into the system, the fresh coins, on a time basis through that fixed subsidy amount of the block reward given to the winning node, the winning miner in the future transaction processor that wins the right to add the block. And so Toshi designed this in a clever system to subsidize the network in the beginning, but hope that the network would grow in terms of transaction volume so that the fees you pay to send coins that were already in the system, no longer fresh, will actually grow as this block reward subsidy decreases, cutting in half approximately every four years, as we know, from 50 coins, which started in 2009, to 25, to 12.5, and 6.25 now. Again, this distribution of fresh coins from the 21 million supply is so based in time. And it's also critical to understanding why BSV is the answer to ensure the profitability of the Bitcoin nodes and mining network in the future. Because as that number continues to go down, the time to generate more transaction fee revenue is becoming more urgent. And luckily, BSV has solved that with now miners winning blocks that actually generate more in transaction fees sometimes than that fixed subsidy that they get of 6.25 coins currently, and in the future, 3.125 coins and less. All of this is enveloped in a set of rules. We'll learn over the next few days that Bitcoin is not just electronic cash. That is the first use Satoshi laid out for it. But he also described in his writings the power of it to be used for data applications. It is a blockchain. It is a data network. And it has a set of rules, a network protocol, just like IP protocol for the internet, that will unleash tremendous power if it's allowed to scale. And as Calvin mentioned in his opening video, there is a Canadian consulting firm, MNP, which you'll also hear from at this conference, who at our last conference described a report they did studying the original Bitcoin protocol rule set released by Satoshi Nakamoto and evaluating it against the competing chains, BTC and BSV, and finding that it's BSV that most fulfills that original protocol. Why is that important? It's important because people get confused. Here's how I would describe it. Bitcoin is the protocol, BSV is the blockchain and digital token that fulfills it. And it does so by fusing, as I've said so many times before, the power of data and money together, giving value to data, right there in the word, bit and coin. It's a network that does that in a way that did not exist before. Time is very important to that concept, because data can have value but time gives more value to the data. Think of these two examples. There's an application in the BSV world called WeatherSV, in which you can pay to open up weather channels and record the status of weather in a particular city, such as New York City, every hour, and have that data written to the blockchain. In the future, the company is looking to create a data marketplace so that that data can be monetized by people interested, for example, in studying climate change or having climate control devices. Well, if you're recording data about New York City's weather, it doesn't really have value unless you know the time, the date. At what point in time of the day is it 50 degrees Fahrenheit and the precipitation is 10%? That data has value when it's attached to time. Same thing if you're going to record electronic health records, which people are looking to do on the blockchain. If you take information at the doctor's office about my vitals, that has value, but only if you know the date and time, but particularly the date at which it's taken, because it's influenced by your age and the status of different medical conditions. So it is time that really gives value to data. And so when we talk about Bitcoin giving value to data, that's true, fusing data and money, that is time stamped. And that time stamping gives it even more power. To unleash that power, of course, we know in the BSV community that you have to scale. You have to scale the blockchain to hold the volume of data that can give that value. And that's what Satoshi always envisioned in this famous email from April of 2009 saying to developer Mike Hearn at the time that Bitcoin never really hits a scale ceiling. It could exceed the volume of Visa at the time, which was um, in 2009. But that's not what happened. As we all know, 
the BTC protocol developers decided to restrict the capacity of the Bitcoin blockchain to a small one megabyte size, meaning it only does seven transactions a second at maximum. Nowhere near the visa capacities of 2,000 transactions a second on average and 50 to 60,000 transactions at peak period. Compare it to email. What if, in the 1990s, whoever controlled the email protocols that we use today, SMTP, POP, IMAP, had said, you know what, let's restrict email protocol's capacity to just seven emails that can be sent anywhere in the world, not just by you, but by everybody. Had that happened, email would not have grown to be the powerful tool that it is today, where today, 2.4 billion emails are sent around the world globally. Well, when we hate the spam, we also appreciate the value it gives to our lives. And this is the same type of scaling we want to see with the Bitcoin blockchain. When we talk about going to millions and billions of transactions per second, people think we're crazy, but think about what happened with email. The same thing happened over the years through the scaling of increased data capacity, increased technology improvements. That's what we want to do with BSV, to create a world where you have unbounded scaling, so it's not up to our association and the developers who work with us to determine what should be the scale of the network. It's up to market forces and the improvement of technology. Just like today, where we have gone past the world of downloading MP3 files very slowly for music on early modems, to having HD movies streamed to our home on Disney+, and we're complaining when it's not fast enough. It's the progress of technology. At our last conference in Zurich in June, Steve Shatters, our technical director of the Bitcoin SV infrastructure team, showed a live demo of the upcoming TerraNode software for BSV. It's an enterprise class version of the Node software and demonstrated on the live test over 50,000 transactions a second capacity and in later tests, 75, 100,000 transactions per second. And that's really just getting started. It's also allowing all the data of the blockchain to accumulate and create more value. This is a chart from CoinDance, which charts the accumulated Bitcoin blockchain growth of competing blockchain networks. The red is BSV. The gold is BTC. In May of this year, BSV overtook BTC in the total data size of the blockchain. And that hockey stick is just going to get even more dramatic. It's continuing to accelerate because of the diverse types of data that are being added to the BSV blockchain because we have scaled. And in fact, while the BTC network remains with its one megabyte block cap, our developers working with the mining community have lifted the block caps now up to two gigabytes, and it will go higher in the future, if not soon. And we're already seeing, in August of this year, two, two gigabyte blocks that were mined, the first ones in the world, yielding a block reward that was 10 more coins than the 6.25 coins of the current fixed subsidy. And that happened in August, and we were all very excited. But we're now at to a point where it's gotten boring. For those of you who follow the BSV block sizes, this is a chart from bsvdata.com of the number of blocks since just August, each bar is a block, that's over 1.6 gigabytes in size. We used to cheer at one gigabyte, which is 1,000 megabytes. And now we're consistently getting this number of 1.6 to 2 gigabyte blocks. That is 2,000 times the capacity of what those people over at BTC are doing. This is the way Bitcoin was designed to be. And the block sizes on average continue to grow on BSV, and this yields a very important practical result. And you hear about me talk about this a lot because it's so key. The cost to actually operate on the network. Because the block capacity of BTC is so small, its fees can be high and unreliable. Right now, recently, it's lower than it has been in a long time, about 40 cents. But that's still far too high to power a global network. Imagine if you were paying 40 cents to send every email. People would not be using email anywhere near the capacity we do today. And in April of this year, it was $33. You can't operate an enterprise class application on a network where you don't know if the fee to send a Bitcoin payment or data transaction one day is 40 cents or $30. It does not work. And Ethereum, which has tried to become the enterprise blockchain, has had the same problems. It's had trouble scaling, where its fees have hit, on average, almost $70 in May, $60 in September. Right now, it's about $21, but again, still far too high for enterprise class scale. Well, BSV's fees last year, the median for the entire year, one-fiftieth of a US cent. 
And we think that's actually still too high. It's going to get lower as we scale even more. Now, it's not always 150th of the US cent, because if you submit a file with a lot more data size, it costs more. But the reality is this can power a payment network that is very efficient, not to send our daily payments, but to open up new business models where all of our internet activity and other data can be monetized with tiny, tiny micropayments down to a cent, less than a cent, because it's so efficient to send a single payment. And this is a chart of the mean transaction fee on a daily basis from bsvdata.com for just 2021 to date. And you see it ranges from three one hundredths of a cent to 3.5 cents. And the 3.5 cents, you see those peaks when there's been efforts by the BSV community to generate big blocks by loading bigger data files. And so those do cost more than a payment. But payments remain very, very efficient, well less than a 50th of a cent. And that allows us to fulfill this, the vision that Satoshi laid out for small, casual transactions over the internet. Bitcoin was not created just to allow wealthy people and big companies to buy large troves of BTC and stick it in a treasury hoping to get rich. It was designed to power small, casual transactions over the internet. And even as we project the rise of nanopayments, not just micropayments, nanopayments down to tiny fractions of a cent. This has led, as Calvin mentioned, BSV's transaction volume to start to exceed other competing chains. This is from August 25th, where BSV's transaction volume that day was almost 2 million, well more than Ethereum and XRP on that day. Now, it's not always true. There are days where it's higher, there are days where it's lower. But the point is, because of scaling, BSV has the capacity to do far more than all of these other competing networks. And that's what we're going to be looking forward to more with Terranode, which is the enterprise class software, which we believe will get us to billions of transactions per block and millions of transactions per second. So that we could do this. All of us are these figures operating and sending data, interacting with the blockchain, whether we're attaching social media images, multimedia files, music, our healthcare records, and being able to exchange tiny payments all over the world for this data and the information that becomes valuable with it. This leads to these advantages of a blockchain like BSV, a universal source of truth we can all access, breaking down data silos, reducing intermediaries, and generating that ability to do small online payments with data just as Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned. Finally, let me tell you why it's time for BSV. Well, you're going to hear over the next few days from a lot of these companies I'm about to describe. It's time to take all of this vision for Bitcoin and make it really possible for the world. And that means better digital wallets, such as the companies you see before you on the screen. You'll also see the entry of two new interesting wallets, Relija from Vianex and Signavera from the ELAS company out in Australia, that are making a world of payments more simplified, as well as an enterprise class suite of wallet capabilities. It's time for new ways to make internet payments, including tiny payments. A lot of people like to use Pew from Handcash, but you're going to hear about a new entry, PeerSend, which is using the internet and browsers to send money like magic. It's going to be magic when you see it. It's also time to empower micropayments. You're going to hear from Coda, which won one of our hackathons a couple of years ago, and its journey to use micropayments to power developer APIs to get developers paid for their work, as well as a move to tokens and computation, as well as companies such as Haste Arcade, which are using micropayments to reinvent how people can make money off of video games. We're also going to reinvent the music industry. Blaircast is finally emerging to present to you its plan for a music distribution platform using BSV and micropayments. Music Art is coming later this year to create NFTs of album covers and reinvent how those pieces of work can generate revenue. And it's time to tokenize the world. There are a lot of token protocols on BSV. You're going to hear from some of them over the next few days. But we believe in a world where all of the real assets of our lives can be tokenized, traded, and really have lots of forms of liquidity powered efficiently by BSV. Speaking of tokens, NFTs are all the rage. And we'll hear tomorrow from Bullish Arts founder Francesco, where he has created a platform that is now also supporting BSV to mint NFTs for contemporary artists. You can even do NFTs of words. We'll hear from the founder of Slictionary about how definitions of words can actually generate revenue. And of course, big brand owners are creating NFTs as, such as we'll hear from Nifty Co. If you like CryptoKitties on Ethereum a few years ago, where well, you're going to love DuroDogs, then we'll hear from Unbounded Enterprise about their plan to make this the official pet of the metaverse. 
Fabric is launching Fabric X, and you'll hear about this. It's NFT platform, celebrities, artists, and people of all types. It's also time to transform online games and esports, and we believe this is going to be an early phase of where the growth of BSV is happening. We're already seeing it. You're going to get a presentation this morning by a collection of four companies, including Built by Gamers and Haste Arcade, with some inventive ways that they're going to be using BSV. And it's time to bring more life to characters. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from the CEO of Zenoscope, one of the leading graphic novel publishers in the United States, and its collaboration with Epic, which is a leading provider of digital experiences and NFTs. They're working with BSV company Cryptofights and Fix. We're going to bring location to life. We'll hear again from Robert Rice, the CEO of Transmira, what's, what's happening with his AR, VR, and XR platform called Omniscape. And it's time for a better internet for users, where we're not relying just on free services, such as Facebook, which didn't do so well yesterday, and uh, have to rely on them selling our data. But what if we can reinvent that model that services actually empower us to make money from our activity on the internet? So we'll hear from some of these companies that you see on the screen. And that is requiring us to have better identity management. We're going to hear from the founders of MedID in China and Babbage, which all have inventive ways to use the blockchain to create a single place where we can manage our identity, as opposed to logging in different places all the time. And it's time to empower patients with their health data, such as EHR data, and VXPass we're going to describe for you, to provide more accountability to the world, such as Ana is doing, to hold you accountable for your own goals using BSV. It's time for better data integrity in a more honest world, which Veridat will tell you more about, as well as Enchain, describing more the launch of its Kensai platform to bring better data to business. Business processes can be made more efficient by the companies you see before you, InvoiceMate, Sarascript with document flow management you'll hear about, KYC on chain, and the new name for Kurt, a prior hackathon finalist, Mint Blue. And it's time for a more sustainable world, where blockchain technology can actually help us achieve environmental goals through supply chain, just as Unisat Seafood Chain or Recycle SV. And as Calvin mentioned, it is time for blockchain mining to become more energy efficient. And we'll hear a great panel about that tomorrow, as well as some sessions from Tall, Enchain, MNP, and others. It's time for smart contracts and computation. They're here on BSV, and we'll hear from the founder of Escript, Xiaohui Lu. It's time also that all of this technology is used for everyone, for financial inclusion and financial services across the world. We'll learn about that, as well as how it's used for government processes, from Dominium, um, targeting Africa in the UAE, some great initiatives that are happening. And of course, we've heard in the past about the Tuvalu National Digital Ledger Project being built on BSV. Law and order is so important to make all of this possible. We'll hear from some blockchain analytics companies, and of course, everyone's favorite, a representative from the IRS Criminal Investigations Division, to talk about how really we can bring more compliance to this world. And it is time to finally take all of this technology and build something real with it. We're tired of just reading about charts and prices of, of uh, digital currencies going up and down. We want to see building blocks to real value. And it's time to recognize, as I mentioned, how the future is built on the past. I'm so looking forward to this panel at the end of the day with Scott Stornetta, Stuart Haber, Dr. Craig Wright, and famed financial cryptographer Ian Grigg. It's time for Bitcoin to become exponential, to be the blockchain for everyone, everywhere, and everything, not just for a few people. That's Satoshi's vision. That's my vision. And when I say everyone, I do mean everyone, including not just the people in this room who know about technology, but people like my parents who married a long time ago and had the time to still be the last couple standing, to raise me, to get the opportunity to do what I do today, and hopefully grow to look just like my father does. And this is all a reminder as we take this journey over the next few days about the power of time. It is all about time. Humans, we've always learned so much of our lives from time. Early humans looked to the skies, to the moon, to the sun, building structures oriented to a solstice, devices that measure sunrise to sunset in 12 equal parts. And in the dark, we use devices that use the flow of water, the flow of sand, the flow of melting wax because time flows continuously. 
And then came mechanical clock towers, swinging pendulums with harmonic motion. A device small enough for our wrists, and clock that is atomic, even digital. And then we look back to the skies for time, reminding us of moments to celebrate and remember, organizes our lives, measures speed and performance, provides order to events so that we can detect dishonesty and reveal truth. And time connects us across the globe with a common system. And using time, Bitcoin created another way to connect the world with peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash recorded in a distributed ledger of transactions organized to blocks connected across time. Satoshi called it a distributed timestamp server, a time chain, powering a new way to record digital payments and all forms of data actions in chronological order, providing transparency and yielding a universal source of truth. But Satoshi's vision has been restricted by those who did not want to see blockchain scale, who did not want to see it do more. But after all this time, Bitcoin is back with ESV. And it's time for blockchain to be useful for everyone. It is time to build more efficient business and government systems. It is finally time to make a better world with the BSV blockchain. It's about time.